everybody, it's Cinnamon Cunny Road Trip, and today we're up for a three hoot lesson of a really fabulous old vintage car left in a blooming field with gorgeous clouds. Did you guys love the thumbnail? That's your preview of what we're going to be doing, but of course, one picture in picture. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He's going to be tracking me with all of our cameras so that you guys can paint with me at home, make this project for yourselves, give this as a gift either to yourself or somebody you know that loves cars. I'm kind of really pumped about this. This is the reference that we're going to be working from today. I'm going to be painting on this 11 by 14 board. Um, it's not really an artist board panel, but it kind of is, and it's just prepped and ready to paint. And they're very nice for storage. I have my acrylic paint out here. All the materials are in the description below. And I'm going to be starting this project by sketching in with my burnt umber because I'm crazy like that. You're going to do it. Oh, sorry, what, babe? Oh, no, you can just, I just I'm talk I'm chatty today. I'm really pumped about this project. Mm, like, why? super excited about it. Why? Um, Because whereas cars are not normally, like, my big jam, like, I don't really just do them, or nor do I consider myself, like, amazing at cars. Um, This particular piece, actually, the ones that we've been just doing lately, they speak to me and, you know, who I am as a person. And so I really love that. I love the flowers. And I, I think these clouds are going to be fun to paint. I think this wonderful burst of color. And so I imagine that somebody else at home who's maybe like me is like, I want to do this piece, but I'm not really like, you know, a car person is going to love this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to grab a little, this is, um, oh, I grabbed a, can a Grand Prix. These are really more traditionally oil brushes. Let me grab a Cambridge. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing, actually, I'm just going to use it. Nothing bad will happen. It's just that when brushes are entirely bristles, sometimes they over soften. But it's a fabulous brush, so I'm going to do it. Oh, goodness gracious. Wishes. We always do these. We always do these before the show. <laughs> Almost completely <laughs> forgot. It's about putting good intentions in the universe. So um, love and goodness for a friend of mine, Tanya's family. Uh, they've got something happening with a little Sherpa that's very stressful for everybody. Um, uh, wish for Lisa to be supported by everyone so she can shine. Um, Karen could just use break from the universe. Just totally. That is her request. Just, just a break for a little while. And honestly, considering what's been going on, I think she could. Uh, Amanda H is, uh, wishing that there was understanding for sleep apnea out there. Um, prayers, uh, for a loving and safe home, um, for a foster grand, uh, baby that came into this one family. So we just want that baby to be in the safest, happiest home and very protected and that the greater good to be served there. Jennifer B, health and strength, um, and for herself, and then also during the end of a relationship, and Janine, for just her whole family to be cool. So that's what we're putting out there into the world. Those are, I love that. That's my favorite part. Of the whole thing. I'm going to just put you know, a little of the brown on here, and I'm going to just very, I'm going to bisect the canvas. It's a little bit high. This guy kind of starts up here, and the hill slopes down, which I really liked. Kind of at this cool little angle. And then there's a distant far little hill. Distant say far little hill. And then there's this great car, you know, that's about in this space. You'd be like, oh, yeah, there's a little car here. Should be peeking up into the sky somewhat, right, that we've got going on. So I just want to block in. You're like, oh, wow, you really don't do cars. I'm just uh, going to be talking about basic shapes, mm. you know, as I'm going and then we'll be painting this in in the field. I just want to know where things are as I'm painting. So when I'm putting in a painting, when I'm working from a reference, I like to just sort of block things in, you know, on a canvas. I'm going to come down here and say there's this heavy field of flowers coming up into the car, which I thought was a brilliant line and I didn't even really need to fix because it brought the viewer's eyes all into the center point of this. And then I've got a nice little bunch of flowers here so that creates almost like a river. Pretty darn cool. I'm going to rinse this out, and I'm going to start putting in my sky, which I think I'm going to do as a mix of my um, bum, 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 words, my phthalo blue and my ultramarine blue. And if I knock it back at all, it'll be with this burnt umber. So I'm putting in a little titanium white. This is Holbein. I'm mixing Holbein and golden today. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be doing my ultramarine here. That's a nice blue. Very muted blue. Sometimes ultramarine uh, gets a bad rap, but it's actually a really wonderful color. <laughs> it's a very old, really respectable color. These 
these old colors, they get a bad rap. They get a bad rap. These I new may modern. even, if I find it, if, if, do we put it here? Do you know where all the little uh, blenders that were right here went? Hmm. Probably they were right over there. there. Huh? Probably right over there. Okay. You'll grab those for me. I'll look for them. Okay. I'm going to start painting this in. I'm going to show you a really cool trick with a really cool blender. So what I'm going to be looking for, here's my big brushes, is I'm going to be looking for a nice, soft little blend on the sky, right? And it's very light right at the horizon. So let's load a bunch of white into my brush here. This is a number 26 ruby satin. You see it? The little puff blender. No, 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 not in the package, I loose. Oh, why wouldn't you put that back in the package? It was out for reasons that I'm using. I just want, no, I think that one hasn't been out no, and I, back in. I okay, that. yes, I do want that one, I guess. I put that one in there. This is live. And I actually had pulled these brushes out for this project. Uh, I put them back in. Because Don is helpful. And intent is everything. So if you guys ever have followed me, this is in this beginning and end set I did, which everyone's like, why is this set here? This is, my mom's talked about this. A lot of people have talked about this. This is the best varnish brush ever. But by the way, it's also the most incredible blender ever. So once my brush is fully loaded with this white, I'm going to come here and I'm going to definitely blend out these wonderful words with the yeah. white. And, you know, work them into the canvas. This is also going to give me um, some white to start working into. Besides blending these words out and letting them vanish. I'm going to be able to work my little sky. And get a good, good result. We're going to just, um, today, if you pay with me before, we're going to kind of just chill and... Uh, Enjoy this painting because I think it's just one of those paintings that is enjoyable. Yeah. I you know, agree we're not going to rush along or anything. So I'm going to load with a little of my ultramarine blue and a little of my thalo blue together. I like them as a mix for a sky. Go ahead and get right back into this white. And I come here and I really want to really try to mimic this beautiful radial effect that's going on in the sky. So I'm going to kind of mimic that with my brush strokes by fanning them. See how I'm fanning them out? Fan, fan, fan. Yeah. Fan, fan, fan. Fan, fan, fan. I find it often helps to say nonsensical things. Now that really does put a soft sort of... Yeah. It really does, and I like it quite a lot. Now, I'm going to get a little of the white back into my brush. My brush is somewhat wet. I'm going to load back up with my ultramarine and my phthalo blue, mixing them together. And I want to make sure that when I come back, you know, we're just blending back this way. There we go. If everything stays wet, then I can use my soft blender. Everything stays wet, then I can use my soft blender to make the nicest transition between these two um, areas. And then the other thing I want to say about blenders is that it there are many good soft blenders. So this is one that I happen to love, but it is not the only brush in the soft blending sea. <laughs> A lot of people are very fond of uh, things like goat and other brushes. Oh, I didn't make it quick enough. It's too dry in the studio. It is. We have the air conditioner. Watch going. this. I'm going to come right back with white. But it just goes. Shoo, shoo, shoo. I'm going to catch it now. Oh, wow. Right there you go. Ever have trouble with that one? A lot of people do. There we go. Sometimes the stuff just dries on you. And acrylic paint, once it dries, that's kind of it. But sometimes you've got to work a little area, you know, against each other to be like, okay, I really need you to do this. And you just segment it out like I'm about to do because okay. I want it to be softly blended. You really can't reactivate acrylic, can you? No, no. There are some special acrylics that are made to be reactivated, but uh, <laughs> golden heavy bodied or Holbein heavy bodied is not them. They were designed not to reactivate. Designed not to reactivate. 
And so I'm just trying to create this beautiful halo soft image and have a lot of fun. You guys ask me about these a lot. And so I'm going to just make sure I'm showing you how I might do that. There we go. You can use um, goat hair is really nice. Soft, soft synthetics are really, really nice. The reason I had pulled out three is that once they start to get dirty on the filaments, it can be hard to continually blend. I'll try to dry this out. And then this one will not be allowed in the varnish bucket. Mm. This is also going to be really nice when we do our clouds. There we go. Yay. Yay. I'm just softening that. Isn't that nice? It is very nice. I'm just softening it. I want a nice soft blend. Okay, I think I've got a very good, can you see a nice transition there? Oh, yeah. And then we need to evaluate, is it contrasting enough? Because I oftentimes on the screen when I look, I have to back up from here. Because on the screen when I look, I can't tell. <gasps> Jealousy. What? You have coffee. Yeah. I, you need to go get one? I, well. All right. I'm going to load back into my yeah. white here while you're uh, thinking about your coffee situation. Because I, I do think I want to I'll, I'm absolutely be patient. continue to lighten this right here. Because I want that almost divine sky. Sometimes when we're painting a divine sky, you create this sort of keyhole of light. And even though the clouds are going over it, I really want to see it. What is that blending brush you were using actually called? Okay, so no one ever uses this for blending because it's called the ultimate varnish brush. So it's the ultimate varnish brush. And it is. That you're not putting in varnish because it gives a really good blending effect. It does give a really good blending effect. I prefer it dry, but it'll do it wet too because it's so soft. So there you go. You've hacked the brush. Well. That's okay. That's what they're for. You know, just softly, softly go. Goat is also very popular. I've got a bunch of goat pills. Those are called blenders, too, for a reason. And I'm just trying to create that oil effect in my sky, you know, getting that radiation, getting that out there. I'll let that have a little minute. I'll let it think for a second, as it should. Sit in the corner and think about itself. Put out some more paint colors. And John can say hi to everybody, and we'll block in. The car and the hill and some of the other stuff. And then we'll put in our clouds, which we're really going to put in today. We're like, I'm put them in. And you're like, what were we doing the other time? Not putting them in. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I'm going to leave them with you while you put the paint. While I'm putting paint out. So I'm putting out a little yellow ochre. I've also decided that I'm really going to enjoy a little Indian yellow. Now, listen, if you're on my um, Facebook group, there's a file that tells you all the paint companies that carry this and the ranges of cost for that color. And it's really $4 up to like, you know, I think uh, $20 for Indian yellow, depending on the paint color. So that's something that you can absolutely find. I'm going to put out some cad orange. This is real cadmium. And the reason I used real cadmium on the orange is that it with the burnt umber is the secret to a happy, rusty car. Not the only secret. It's just a secret. I'm also going to put out some burnt sienna. That's a nice reddish brown. And I'm going to give us some phthalo green. And we already have our phthalo blue out. And, I, and then, oh my goodness, how did I forget my black? But I did. I'm going to put out a little, little alizarin crimson. And a smidge. Can you grab me some black paint, babe? And a smidge, I mean, I've got fluid over here. I could use that. Uh, I've got Dax purple. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm purpled. Well, I thought I had purple. Did I leave my purple? Oh, there, there it is. So I've got some Dax purple to Dachshundzine purple, which is often uh, very much like a black and is a cool thing. So it's okay, babe. I'll work it out with the Dax purple. Oh, thank you. I don't need, well, okay. I'll take all the blacks. John brought me all the blacks. Every black that I own. I'm right, going to pull this out here and squeeze some of this black out. That's rather nice. Probably more than I will need for the whole painting by far. And I'm going to mist my paint because one of the things I was noticing when I was painting is that my paint's drying very quickly. Sometimes you'll find your acrylic paint dries slowly and sometimes you'll find your... Dad's over there. I'm, you can microwave mine. 
sometimes you'll find it dries very quickly and sometimes you dry, it dries really slowly and you know you just gotta test it <laughs> sweetheart i love you uh you gotta just test it i get so distracted it's like so weird i'm in my bubble it's like i'm in this private bubble with you and then like stuff interrupts me and i'm like couch <laughs> just, like, <laughs> random weird thing. daughter comes in to warm up coffee and mom falls apart okay so I'm going to get that um, same brush I was using earlier just because it's a perfectly nice brush. I'm going to make sure there's no blue in it or white because I don't want any of that. I'm going to make a very dark value in this zone. I'm going to take my brown and my black together and I may, I may underpin it with a little bit of my green. But let's paint all of this quite dark. Right? Quite dark. We're going to build light colors up on top of it, but there's such a deep undervalue here. I don't want to, I don't want to miss it. So I'm just painting this deep, dark tone. Going to be underneath here. And this is sort of like blocking in the piece, right? So I'm just brown and black and a little bit of green. Nice dark tone. That's pretty good. Now, I haven't taken this all the way up to my little line here because there'll be like weird, soft little plants and this weird kind of like little bit of, I'll be real soft up here with slight, slightly lighter green value, and then I'll make a distant, hazy little edge. Now, I'm going to get just kind of like my brown. I'm not going to rinse out my brush, but it doesn't have to be quite as dark here. It's dark, but not quite as dark in the center of this area of the canvas. If that makes sense. Yeah, totally makes sense. I might just green and brown this time. I'm super happy you're doing a truck painting. No. You, John is so excited that there's been some cars. Like, and I, this was sort of the weekend of cars. We had this big uh, vote about, I, you know, somebody had mentioned, actually, several guys in our community have mentioned that our paintings have a bit of a girlish feel to them. <laughs> now, there's a... So I've been trying to man it up. <laughs> there's a couple of really good questions back to back. To okay. Blossom. What are you thinking about the Holbein paint? They've, they've seen you Holbein? using it for a while. Holbein? Yeah. Love it. Okay, so the difference between Holbein and golden acrylic is... Because I, I, I want to have a little rest and sip my coffee. That was defeated by my beautiful, amazing daughter. Yeah. Um... So the difference between Holbein and Golden is basically this. Golden on the heavy body is a stiffer, more robust paint. It has a higher pigment load. In fact, Golden as a company, across all of its products, tends to really put as much pigment into the paint as it possibly can. Um, it also has a lot more information on the label. Holbein has certain colors that I think are harder to get and they're better at certain colors. Like I think Holbein is wholly better at things like the primary magenta, primary yellow, and cayenne. Or at least I just hurt, these are my preferences, by the way. This is not a scientific evaluation of the page. This is my opinion. So put that in context and also listen to others. But that, you know, I do think that they're better at that. Certain colors like the bamboo greens, they do certain bright colors. They have colors that Golden just doesn't have that as a painter are amazing to work with and help you compete with oil, oils a bit, where, you know, really come after the oil kind of color and feel. They have less drag on the brush, but they're not as robust. Like the paint isn't as heavy body. You have to modify it with a gel or something to get as much wet. And that's really the difference between the two. But are they equally quality? Yes. I, I feel like they both have incredible quality. No. In my painting experience, again, I didn't do a drag down, and I didn't stick them out on a rock in Arizona. Now, Victoria Hi, Victoria. Is, I'm going to keep browning it up. Yeah, that's good. Now, she said she's quite shocked because you went and, and used black and not brown, which you typically don't do. I don't often get into my blacks, and here's why. There's nothing wrong with using black to shade a paint, right? Yeah. Knock a paint. Um. But the issue with it is, is sometimes in new painters, they'll use black so heavily they muddy the color. So nothing wrong sense, with yeah. it. Um, some teachers will make it seem like there's a hard and fast rule about this, but there's actually not a hard and fast rule about this. It's just that they, they get, I think, frustrated with 
that process. I'm mixing a little brown into my green. So when it comes to blacks, you know, if you use correctly and you use sparingly, you'll have a wonderful experience. But if you use them incorrectly, and I'm going to just go ahead and pull this back and then I'll sketch the car into that space, then they can take over your whole painting and cause a muddy mess. But there's nothing wrong with the colors themselves. Otherwise, the great artist just wouldn't have bothered with it and they wouldn't have been able to sell any. They'd have been like, no, I didn't like it. And the paint companies wouldn't make them. It would be a whole thing. Trust me. Yeah. All right. So now that I've got these weird patchworks of values, right, I'm going to rinse this out a bit. And I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to take a little bit of my dye off, just a smidge, and I'm going to get it into the bristles. And I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow ochre and I mix them together. I like using diox as a way to gray yellow ochre. And so that's how I'm going to get like the dark value of this far away hill. This far away hill. Now, Victoria was asking if she wasn't as confident with the black, could she go in with the, with the brown? Yeah. Yeah. So or just use diox. Or, oh, yeah, diox. Use the dioxazine purple. That's almost a chromatic black. You can make a chromatic black. I have a whole video about like all the blacks, why there's so many blacks, and how to do chromatic black. Um, it's like super fun, super like light, and it's just an hour. <laughs> What's wrong with all my videos? It's just an hour. <laughs> <sighs> so I'm Joe. Just reminded me that uh, hi Joe. Yeah, uh, that I need to upgrade the gnomes. They don't have international passports and, you know, the... We're working on getting them registered so they can travel globally, but there's apparently a lot of anti-gnome sentiment around the world. Well, so, you I... know, we've got we've to we've have a meeting. We've got to build bridges. We've got to, you know, educate on um, gnome awareness. Well, what, what I found is, is that a gnome by any other name isn't necessarily a gnome. Mm. And, you know, we, we go by you know, region by region. I wouldn't even say country by country. It's more of a, you know, geolog you know, geographic, you know, area where they roam around. But there's definitely large tribes of gnomes that are coming together to work with us internationally. <laughs> I'm so amused by this. I'm inclined not to even change my brush, guys, if you don't care. I don't really need to, so I'm not gonna. Um, I'm gonna start my clouds and my clouds are gonna be my burnt umber and i'm gonna think i'm gonna gray it with my ultramarine so see how i've got my burnt umber out here and if i bring my ultramarine into it it makes a really lovely gray just a lovely lovely little gray see that and so then i can kind of think about my little cloud shape so i've got an interesting little cloud shape that's right here we're not going to paint little uh, visual representations of condensation that you could fly a plane through. We're only going to paint the shapes we see. And the reason I say that is sometimes people get so wrapped up on what they know or feel about clouds that they can't paint them. So they think about them emotionally and they end up with weird cotton balls everywhere. So what we're going to do is we're just going to paint shapes. I want you to look very closely at your reference photo. And I'm going to use kind of the corner of my brush. And I'm going to just block in a basic shape here. It's going to come down. And this is maybe a distant little, little fella, right? And see, it's quite dark, right? A little bit of a quite dark little, little cloud. Here. I haven't even gotten any one. And it's a very dark little, little value. See that great little shape? But its little friend is right here. I'm going to bring this over. And I am going to just observe these shapes. Clouds are so impacted by perspective. And I love this photo because it demos this like nobody's business. If you mentally do lines, look at this. Look at the, the one point perspective going on in these clouds there. They have. <laughs> They have a vanishing point like happening here and you can see how they're wide and they come in. And also the part of the cloud that we see is really impacted by this perspective. So you can see how it's light here, but then there's this dark value right here. 
and that the light of the cloud is on top of them and they're dark on the bottom. Isn't that crazy cool? That's how you know this guy wasn't um, photoshopped into the scene. Yeah. It's because the lighting on the clouds is correct. Oh, yeah, that's true. So clouds are lit by the sun, and if the sun is above them, then the shadow should be underneath. I'm going to just, this is a nice little shape. And I'm going to just paint that one right there. Look at that. We got a little cloud. I may put out some of my zincs. Two reasons I'm going to put out my zincs is it's very transparent and it will lighten this wonderful color, but it won't um, change it so deeply that it won't be what it's supposed to be. I'm going to go right here. See how I'm adding the zinc to that? It just lightens it a bit, but not so much you can't see what it is. See, right about there is about where it would take that. I'm just going to put in that little zinc to that space. I may even go over these. Let's learn all about clouds today. So then if these clouds are here and these are all coming in perspective, then this wonderful little cloud is going to come in here. And I'm going to do an interesting thing. I may even put this over here for myself. John can keep your picture and picture going, but I want to be able to see my, my ridges and my textures. And I'm going to just be, see how this is coming here? Towards that right, it's wider here, it's narrowing yeah. there, it's in perspective. I love that. I love it. Painting them up, talking about them, you know, and they're they're coming down here in this perspective, all the way to the horizon line, and I'm curving my stroke, I'm arcing my stroke towards the horizon line. Now listen, if you're a beginner, 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 and you haven't painted before, I have lessons for that. And we'll get you here to this level of instruction if you follow along. Everyone will tell you it will. And the reason we have three levels of beginner lessons is because being a beginner is a journey and it doesn't happen in one foul swoop. That's my favorite thing is being a beginner. Being a beginner is exciting time. Because it's when everything is like at the most like wide open, unknown, you know, like potential for everything being new and exciting. I don't know. I just like beginning things. So by now in my painting, if we back up and we give it a look, we're starting to see them show up, aren't we? They are. They're definitely showing up. And I may come back with my darker color. I just, uh, you know, I just wanted to work this for a little while. So we could block in these shapes, because that's really all we're doing. We're just blocking in some shapes. Now here, I have a little bit of a dark cloud that's coming in. He's, he's sort of loose. You can see I'm just like wiggling my little brush. I'm not going scrub, 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 scrub. And even when I come in, if I come in with my cloud brushes to give myself the dome soft edge, instead of using a palette knife, I'm going to still not make little circle pops. Circle pop. No circle pops. I'm cocoa for cocoa puffs. No circle pops. Hmm. Oh, it's just wonderful. Uh, there's nothing, however, like being out in nature and painting these clouds as they're going by. Now, you could use any brush to make a cloud, yeah? Any brush. Yeah, you you even have some cloud brushes. But they're, they're what they are is a dome scumbler because there weren't any stiff, scumbling, dry brushing brushes really out there. And as an artist, we really need that, especially for things like clouds and waves and certain distant dry brushed trees and in acrylic paint where something handles heavy body paint and dry brushes it really easily. And... That's you just all it is. It's just we just needed a dry brush brush. All right, I'm going to just keep. Now, I might I might artistically rearrange my clouds a bit. But you basically get them in there. But I use this to inform the overall understanding of my shapes and how I'm putting in this one perspective sky. Which so at was, this point we're starting to actually see happen, right? So for the folks that are sort of asking 
in general like this, because there are a couple questions, you you try to use lots of different brushes, not just your cloud brush to show yeah. how to do brushes. I try to use lots of different brushes because I don't want to ever give the impression that a tool is the only, well, I mean, I, I only where it's super essential would I say a tool is the only way to do it. I think that there are a lot of great tools. I feel like I designed some great tools. I'll tell you about those, but I'll tell you about a lot of tools. Yeah. So that you're of never trapped. Cool. Yeah, that's, it was really pretty much, you got it. Iris got paints with her fingers, so don't, don't be too hard on yourself. Um. Yeah, I kind of sometimes do too. Yeah, you do. We all do sometimes, don't we? Was well, you know. All right. Okay. It's a convenient John, brush. You've been staging. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. I'm you... sorry. No, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm like, I can always tell when John's been staging because things are set? not in the jars. <laughs> I'm mixing more of my gray color, which was my burnt umber. And my um, ultramarine blue, because I want to do some darker little layers. And then I'm going to mist all of my palette because it's such a dry day, and I don't it want all my is. paint to dry out before I get to it. Sometimes I put things out just so you know what's coming. I'll get a little bit of my zinc white into this, but I just definitely want to start. You know, I realize that I have to put a deflector over your table. Mm -hmm. Because where we've... Not that we've moved anything, but if you would look over that, there's an air conditioning duct right above it. Oh, that's what's happening. Okay. Well, we moved the studio. <laughs> we're just not letting you guys see it yet, and because we're still working on it. There's some improvements happening. Okay. And, you know. <laughs> yes, now we just realized we have an air conditioner over where I'm painting. So these things are, <sighs> you know, they're in order. I'm just trying to talk about my darker shadows, and I'm being very contrasty about it because I feel like these strong contrasts will help my painting really pop. I'm going to just come back in here and make sure I've got some of these deep values into the clouds before I start adding the really exciting light values in the clouds. So right now what I have is a distant storm over my little car, right? Yes. But eventually, it'll just be a lovely day. I'm going to just enjoy painting my little clouds. I always love when I like watch like stuff and it's like, you can see the person was like painting one set of clouds and then it, and, and then you, I can see the transitional edit and it's like a whole new sky. <laughs> right. Cause, <laughs> Cause it, they it goes... painted it out. And I think the important lesson from that is all artists paint out their skies. <laughs> I, I love not when I've learned a little bit about clouds and he goes from summer clouds to winter clouds. Yeah. I'm like, in the same sky. And you're like, wait, Dude, what happened? I get it. It's like, and sometimes it's an artistic choice. It just looks better that way. Yeah. And you've got to, you've got to give yourself the room to have these artistic choices, you know, that you're, that you're playing with. I'm going to get a little bit of this. Uh, I'm adding a little more of my zinc in here. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to just make sure that some of this down here, that these clouds go right to that little horizontal edge. Next part, super fun. All right, Super stormy fun. day. Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to grab a smaller brush. I'm going to grab a number six Cambridge. And that's because the Cambridges have a mix of synthetic filaments and Brussels. So they don't over soften on. Them. And I'm going to puff out the rest of my sky. Puff it out. Puff it out. Puff it out. I'm going to use my zinc and just mix a small amount of my shadow sky color to it. My titanium is going to be reserved for pops of awe. Hmm. And here at the edge of these little clouds, I'm going to start to put some highlights in there that they would have of light coming in. But they do. They have little highlights coming in. And just see how I'm just letting it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. You can just... Soften everything that you're looking at. Mm, those but look really nice. The zinc, the transition, the transparent nature of the zinc and its warmth, the way it plays against the sky is just really kind of a joy. And we're going to just be painting today. I just wanted us to have a nice, good, solid three hoot. We hadn't had one in a while. We hadn't hooted hard. Multi-hoot. Multi-hoot. And what we mean, you know, what we mean is we just get more into techniques and details. So if you guys are ready for just a little more information than 
you know, we've covered previously in the past. This is just perfect. I'm just, again, I'm looking. So what am I looking? See that edge there? See those edge there? See those little values? Talking about all those little airy, fairy spaces. Some of these things can be darker. And you can see I'm just layering and dry brushing the layers. I have increased the drama. That is what I wanted to do. And just rolling that in. Isn't that fun? How's that looking? Starting to get cloudier. That's pretty cool. My cloud. It's on me. These are more of our overhead clouds. Those are really cool. Gonna have some fun with it. You have some fun at home too. Get your little brush and be be looking for those for those little moments. And you can out here there's a there's little bits. Like look at this little horizon little fellow. Mm. And we're gonna bring this up on the horizon. I told you there'd be soft little area bits that were gonna make that fun. If you really are enjoying this, we've got another one that was uh, was wildflowers and just clouds. That one was a really fun cloud study, too. Yeah. Just studying the clouds. But I'm not painting, like, bits of condensation. I'm just painting shapes. And I'm just thinking about design and my viewer's eye and what I'm wanting to, to create. That's going. Oh, that's nice. I like it. <laughs> so a lot of a lot of people were uh, commenting that they thought that water carries <laughs> water scaries. Watercolor is a little scary. Watercolor is scary. Yeah. Oh my gosh! You guys have to come by today. We'll get it uploaded later. I did Gandalf today. Yeah. We've done so a Hobbit hole, a really beginner friendly Hobbit hole. And then we did a little kind of Shire-looking olive tree, and now I'm doing Gandalf. I'm going to be doing some Lord of the Rings over there, so let your fandom help you overcome your fear. You know what I think would be really helpful for everybody? Mm. is for you to do a little talk about the use of materials and how not to be afraid to try, try, try again. Oh, yeah, because even though these, they work so differently, like how I would, first of all, I'd already be done with this guy if it was a watercolor. Yeah. <laughs> it would be done <laughs> and resolved. I'd have been like, I'd have done something crazy like, I had wet things very specifically and just put the brush here and it got sky done. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the wonderful joys about watercolor is it can be once you understand how it's different than acrylic, it can be so your friend and, and make give you another element of quick expression. And I like studying things in watercolor and then working them out in um, acrylic. It's it's a nice way to to get my painting process together. so many clouds in my sky if i was still doing a storm i would just keep going but now i'm going to get into my titanium white and i'm going to work it through here i've got my gray color there and you're going to find it's a whole nother animal when titanium white gets involved because it's so opaque i'm just using the corner of my brush Corner of my brush. Coming along here and just making this and being like, hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. Okay. Have a little cloudy day in a little field where an old car got left. I know it has a story, but I don't know what it is yet. I haven't made it up in my head. Just pulling these wonderful little values all through this little cloud. Look at that go. Just 
just feel the clouds now. How's that looking? Back up. Ooh. Pop that contrast. Pop, 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 pop. Mm. Fun stuff. Get my titanium white. Missed my poor paint. I can work it some of that little gray on there because I do want the gray. I don't want it to be. I'm going to use my white later. I'm just working the corner of my brush and I'm making these little airy bits. Right? That's all we're doing. We're just making little airy bits. We could be like, hey, I think there's a. A little more light here from this side, and that's because of the perspective. Clouds have perspective, don't they? Have a point of view. You've got to do. I'm just catching that value in that light. I'm on a little more titanium white on my brush. This is the number six Cambridge brush. Do we have any questions or things going on in the chat? Well, I was, yes, I was, to find, I got to find light in the clouds for a while. We're going to be doing this for a minute. I didn't want to distract you, but yeah, we, I was just chatting over here actually with um, Brittany. Hi, she Brittany. Was, she was like, she was saying, I'll roll, I'll scroll up and I'll read you. She said, um, she was looking for some tutorials like of Marilyn Monroe and thought that would be really cool or like Audrey, Audrey Hepburn. Oh and yeah, those are fun. Yeah, I was chatting back with her, and I was like, how about, like, uh, Eartha Kitt from Batman? <gasps> Same, you know. And, yeah, the best exactly. of all the cat women. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love Michelle Pfeiffer, guys, and, and stuff, but if you haven't Julie seen Newmar. Eartha Kitt do Catwoman, you haven't seen Catwoman. Yeah. It was very groovy times, man. So, yeah, I, you know, I was just like, you know, I threw, I threw that out there. And I, I got to tell you right now, I, I will only accept er Eartha Kitt love. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, come I think bring be, love for Miss Kit. It'd be pretty cool, just like you know. Yeah, the, I would love. It'd be to do cool her. to do the cats someday. Maybe next year. The lady, the cat ladies of Batman. I just like her. I, yeah. I mean, I love Michelle. The She's so great, pretty. But... She's so pretty, right, and all that. But Eartha, Eartha was Catwoman, as I think she was intended to be. All right, let's see how we're doing. How, oh, do we get some clouds that are just dramatically having a little moment here? Look at this cloud drama. Get your cloud drama on. May come back and knock it back with a little bit of a glaze. Right? With my, um, with my zincs. Still got some over here. So I like the Eartha kit. I like that. I like the don't be afraid of watercolor. And a don't fear the reaper kind of a thing. Don't fear it. Don't fear the watercolor. It's fine. Watercolor is fine. It just paints a little differently in how it gets to, you know, it's paper. You know, we do the opposite. You you glaze, you layer darker and darker and darker and darker values. So if, if you enjoy pencil sketching, watercolor may actually be you know, maybe more your speed. Because with mm -hmm. acrylic, what you're doing is you're building up layers. And you can change things maybe as much as you need to. Much lighter value coming up here. <laughs> you get quiet, and then the mic starts to not hear you. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I was, remember I told you it was really weird how it... I'm going to rinse this out real thoroughly. I want to do a couple of things. I want to take a little of my ultramarine... Boom, 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 and work it into my into my brush. I'll get a little of the gray color that I mixed over here, right? So that's just my gray into the ultramarine, but I want a little more blue. And I'm going to get a lot of my zinc in here, so it's super, super light. You guys see me do this? Yeah. I'm going to just keep going. And I'm going to kind of, I want to keep this dark here, but I do want to, what's called knock back. Some of the deeper values. I don't want them to completely vanish. I want them to be sort of implied in the clouds, but I'm going to just lighten up my sky using this combination. You know what I'm doing? Yeah. And because the zinc is transparent, 
I'm going to see everything that I've layered underneath here. How's that? Oh, see that lightened it up a lot, didn't it, guys? Yeah. Just enjoying my sky. Just enjoying it. Are you enjoying your sky? Yes. Uh, we don't want all of it to go away, but we just want to feel like there's a little bit of a light, a light sheriff in town. Yeah. This here. So all of this just comes out of the stormy range and goes into the summer range. And that's what I'm doing. I'm taking this little mix of ultramarine and a small tint of our grain color. And I am taking these storm clouds from angry to summery travelers by. So that should have lightened them up a great deal. Well, I have to say, uh, there's some really cool requests coming in out mm. here. What? So... Um, Christine, and, and this was echoed by many ladies, would like for you to do a BAQ subquest mm -hmm. of Power Women. And I'd like to see Catwoman, oh, Xena, yes. Wonder Woman. You know, they just, they, they, they would like to have some of their iconic ladies demonstrated in ways that they could fandom out on. I'm with you. I that is that a very good out. idea. I could be into that. I'm just going to pull some of these highlighted areas. This is just my titanium white. And I'm trying to think about how this cloud, how the light hitting the top of it and peeking through. Looks like a hot mess up close. I know, nice, it actually looks away. really good. But far away, it starts to take on a real feeling, doesn't it? No, I think it looks great. What I find amusing is how uh, often Honey finds that we, she has to warm up our coffee, which only goes to show how cold our coffee generally gets during a show. <laughs> Oh, thank you, babe. Looking good. Is it looking good, guys? Yeah. I think. How are you feeling about your sky lesson here? Are we have we the, talked about it? There were a lot of people who were saying that when you first put up the cars, they were like, "Nope, nope." I understand you're doing this for some of the other folks, but not for me. But then the sky brought them back. Yeah, that's what I loved about this piece is that this is a landscape painting I would have loved to have done without the car, and the car actually added a little bit. I'm just. Touching some highlights into my mm. cloud space here, like you do, um, and the car and the car brought me back into it, where I was like, I'm excited to paint this. Yeah, I think that that's what's happened to a lot of folks here. Is that this is man? You know what? The, explain what you're doing there, because that's just making those clouds explode. So what I'm doing is I'm observing in my reference photo where the light's hitting, and I'm exaggerating that experience a bit in value. Because that's amazing. Letting it talk about that, that pulls one, you know, area of clouds into each other and then another one out, and we're just trying to talk about that. So that's what we're doing. We're getting that highlight, and then it pops our little clouds, doesn't it? It certainly it does. It's so nice. And, you know, lots of ways to get clouds in. Could do this with a palette knife, too. Lots of ways to get clouds in. It's good to watch a lot of people put in clouds. <laughs> Do it. Enjoy it. Be a cloud observer. Yeah, observe the clouds. Where are the lights? You know, where is the light coming from in the cloud? Where are you seeing some highlights? And if you do see a highlight, you know, how are you going to talk about that? Brush is a little too wet. That's going. I feel like I feel pretty good about that sky, actually. Yeah. I think it's going to go really well with the rest of it. So I'm, I'm good here. You know, you can keep 
keep keep like if you wanted to like get more into your zinc and like continue to use the zinc to to make little highlights i mean i could go at these clouds for like seriously six hours i have gone at clouds for six hours because you've gone just, super cloud super well cloud. it depends on the way i'm trying to talk about clouds am i just am i talking about clouds in a painterly way am i talking about clouds you know in a uh, like factual way like as a landscape painter am i talking about clouds representationally it just depends on what you're coming to the canvas to do so you can always just keep pushing 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 pulling 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 pushing 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 Not lovely. It's all just precipitation anyway. It's all just precipitation anyways. But I could just play with it forever. I could, could like literally kidnap the entire lesson into cloud land. It could be six o'clock and we'd still be here. And no one would probably be complaining. No, it would just be, be a little like, long lesson. Clouds. And maybe we'll do that sometime. Maybe we'll just do like this like cloud a thon, cloud a getting, old <laughs> sky all the time. All right. I'm getting the sky I'm looking for, and I'm talking about my perspective, and I'm happy. Mm. Hmm. But I do want to do one thing. What do you want to do? Might be crazy. See how it works out for me first before you come along. <laughs> you know? Okay. I'm going to make my darker sky color. Oh. I'm going to carve this back because You're I gonna... really liked this opening. Ooh, I see. In the space between these clouds. That's actually really cool there. And I feel like it got busy and close and, you know, it wasn't what I was, it wasn't exactly what I was trying to do. So I was just like, oh. See, we're just popping some holes back in the sky. If ever you have to pop your holes back in the sky, just pop your holes back in the sky. Like, man, I need I need some more like space or you know, I need I need a more noticeable little hole between these two clouds. Go ahead and exaggerate it or put it back. It's not gonna hurt you to come back in and well, I don't know, I don't I don't I don't always know how people feel pain, but it's not gonna hurt me. <laughs> Hopefully you're feeling entitled to come in. That looks so cool. I just liked, I think that, I just want to keep playing with that one point perspective of that sky and I didn't want to lose it all the way. It's just like, you, yeah, you just dialed it in to 10. Yeah? Ah. Well, that's good. I we're like still it. dialing. I'm going to get into the blue. And I may do a similar treatment up here where I had a halo. I feel like this this little fellow got a little tall in the tower. A little more blue in it. So it's just a matter of getting back into the sky that I had before. Mm. Oh, Mary just pushed all the southwest buttons. Did she? Yeah, she would love to see you do a buffalo cloud thunderhead <gasps> over a desert plain. What? <laughs> that would be the painting for Cloudageddon. For Cloudageddon. Could we do that? Yeah. I think that'd be like We can do yourself. anything. This is art. Like it's literally down to like whatever we imagine. <laughs> it's true. And what we want. Oh, okay, better. Just dial it. Better, just, right? Ugh, dial it in. Dial it in. Don't be afraid to dial it in. You know, think about the composition. I the one thing I like about this real time is again, on time lapses or or even tutorials where there's a lot of time lapse involved to shorten it down to a couple hours. Um you miss these little moments where the artist might like change their mind and say hey let's open this space or let's you know play with this thing we're talking about all right let's rinse this out wow it's all done and this distant little hill here right which we were doing earlier was a little bit of our docks purple and a little bit of our uh yellow ochre not yet i think this is ochre it's not oxide is it yep yellow, yellow ochre uh one is synthetic and one is natural there's minor minor differences between them. Let's get my little zinc here. 
And I'm going to just very softly lighten this little distant hill. There we're doing. Yeah. I'm going to just brush this back. Not a lot to do here because where it's dark is like where there's a little shadow. You don't mind a little shadow, do you? Mm. And I can always come back with a little white. Just scumbling back and forth very lightly, letting this just dance over the top of the canvas. What a dance. It needs to dance. If you were not as confident about carving your cloud holes back out, mm. um, could you use a glazing medium to slow that process down? Yeah, you could glaze you could glaze it back slowly in layers. Cool. Yes. Ugh. Is like pinching my ear in a weird way. Oh, it's you know is those little the, earrings. The... the earrings are a little big, and so I was actually mildly concerned about that. But earrings are big. Well, they're they're identical arms. I mean, like I didn't make them. They're just they are what they are. Wow. They're big earrings. Sure. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Missed my canvas. My... Uh, well, you, hey, look, we put it underneath an air conditioning duct. I didn't know. I just looked up and was like, wow, there's a lot of air blowing down. Now, there. out here, we've got our car, and I'll do it chalk this time. I, oh, let me let me dry this to make sure my chalk doesn't okay, get all into the ahead. paint. Okay, so while she's doing that, we'll say, well, first of all, thank you guys for coming. I just love having you guys out here. I, you know, this is probably one of the most fantastic things that Sam and I get to do is to celebrate this live time with you and it's something I love so thank you for coming. I'm going to use my chalk to sort of just sketch out the space that the car is in so that you know I have the object relationship and again I'm owning right now saying it not my jam this is not horses that being said Let's look at the basic shapes that this car is, right? So it's basically sort of like an egg shape, isn't it? <laughs> they said that I need to quit get you coffee and coffee. Co coffee and, and uh, uh, chocolate. <laughs> that would be awesome. All right, so we've got this little car space here. And then there's this beautiful little line that's going to come up here. Coffee there's coffee. a trunk that I'm seeing right here. And so when I'm looking at this, I'm just trying to simplify this down into shapes that, you know, work for me. But of course, when I'm all done with this, I'm going to make a traceable. <laughs> That's what folks were asking about. I was like, I was afraid that you gave it to me and I didn't have it. Up no, I'm going to make one. Okay. So but it's going to be updated on the website. But all right the time the people are like, how do you sketch that in? This is the hot mess. When I make, when I'm doing my traceables, this is the hot mess I'm usually doing. Yep. And I don't, I, I want this car to be, and the reason I'm using chalk is I want the car to feel sort of accurate, right? But I don't want to be so, like, vigilant about it that it all gets away from me, if that makes sense. So let's see what we can do. What have you selected? I'm going to grab a number four. And I'm going to get a little more burnt umber in my... Goodness gracious, at this point, the burnt sand is out, and I'm just going to take my black. It's all fine. <laughs> Brown and black, that's what I'm needing now for this point. And I'm going to start talking about where I think things might be at. Sketching it in, if that makes sense. Yeah. You guys use traceable after the show is over. <laughs> I'll make one. But since I've got a lot of hill and stuff, there's one no point in painting areas that I've got to put a major object in. Yep. And put this up here. Roof comes up this way. John will correct me. It'll be really interesting. Like sometimes when I look at a, a piece later, I'll be like, wow, I didn't see that angle at all. But I'm not going to let that stop me because it don't make perfection, a condition of my enjoyment of the subject. I'm 
I'm getting just my, my you know, bird sienna and my black here. So there's sort of like this little opening to the sky, which is quite lovely. You're just and sort of, of course, you know, these things tend to be parallel, so we'll want to sort of do that. We're just sort of peering in the back of this car. Right, seeing through it. Yep. Very the postman here. I haven't actually looked at that, but it looks like it's maybe a businessman's coupe. I can't oh, tell really? If, yeah, I can't tell if it's a two or a four door from this so picture. Funny. It's a businessman's coupe. Well, then there you go, guys. Businessman's coupe. Lesson learned. Well, the difference was uh, a businessman's coupe had a larger trunk opening, so that I don't wonder how this little this beauty found itself to this field, right? I think the important thing is to see that I'm just sketching in paint and I'm not freaking out. I move slowly and incrementally and I'll build up and there'll be a car here. It just is going to happen. You know, inside there may be a little bit of a this here and there we go. I'll get a little bit more of my black. Now we'll just foreshorten there. And then I'll get a little bit of my black here. And for sure, I've got a little bit coming across here. Yeah, see how bumped out that trunk is? Yeah. They needed to be able to uh, take in and out the showcases because they had uh -huh. to bring those big cases of demo stuff around with them. Well, that makes sense. So they had these giant trunks for the businessmen. And then I'll, you know, I've got this little bit here. There's a, there's a, an implied bumper. There's a little hubcap here that curves up. And then I'm going to just paint the rest of this in brown. And I think I basically know where my car be. Yeah. I may change a few things about it, but pretty much from here, it's in. Like, like right now, like I might grab this little yellow ochre just so I can see some of the, the values. We've got to just, and we'll be adjusting, right? We just want to see and know where it is. And so now it's kind of in, wow. Like I know I say I'm not like a car painter, but. I like it. I got to remind people. <laughs> you, you can paint a car. I can. I just, I'm not like, ooh, come, like, Okay, there's this guy on Instagram, Billy the Artist. I don't I don't know him as a person at all, but I've followed this account for a really long time, and I just give it lots of likes because he paints a lot of motorcycles and racetrack scenes that are in high action and in high realism. And I know how different that is from what I do when I just have such love and appreciation for the art. Chip Foos. Chip Foos, yes. He, he draws some cars. He draws some cars. I'm going to take my, uh, I'm going to just work my big Cambridge for a minute, and I'm going to get my green with my burnt sienna, my burnt sienna, and I think I'm going to start coming out here, I and was I'm going to just pull this little light little stroke down. You see how I'm doing? Yeah. I like this how This is going to be about this little edge here that we've got going on. Right in the same era of this car, man, I loved Ed Roth's work. Did you? Yeah, Big Daddy Roth. He made uh, like the Rat Fink, and uh, that, he was an iconic hot rod designer that made the mouse that uh, everybody, the, the Rat Fink mouse. And he was a cartoonist and car designer. I'm just layering this in. Now, every once in a while, you might see me come back through the green with a bit of my... My most beautiful daughter, my most gorgeous, amazing human being who's so much more talented than me, and I will ever be my little pinky. Can I have a fresh cup of coffee? <laughs> I would have told her that anyway. She is more talented than I am. She's amazing. She's so incredible. You keep her going back so for more paint. All right, here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to just continue to pull this deep value of green through here. And we know we've got, oh, what, all these bushes have happened here, right? So I'm just layering it up, and I'm using this wonderful brush. This is a, I know this is a number 10 Cambridge. It's Look at these pretty. copper ferrules. I love this. I know. Thing. I was just thinking, man, you got to use this. They're pretty to watch. They're just the prettiest brushes in the world. If you're an oil painter, they're a must-have brush. 
I just happen to also take advantage of oil painting tools. <laughs> I do uh, dig do them. You, do you put soap in your in your water? Your, uh, no, your because there's so many foaming agents. Actually, we're just having a big anti-foaming discussion in the bigger uh, in the Art Trip of Fish on Facebook. Yeah, there's a ton of anti-foaming agents in paint. Because acrylic paint wants to foam, and if you put just soap in it to improve the flow, you can actually really create some hot mess in your work. So um, if you're trying to do that uh, in that, no, 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 I'm in a whole new fresh cup. Sweetheart, gorgeous, beautiful. It's okay. Fresh cup. Fresh cup. A fresh cup of coffee. I'll sip my seltzer water until you return. <laughs> So that's why I don't recommend it. I don't think it's a good thing. Um, if you're trying to do that, this is what you'd be using uh, instead. But now it's called Wedding Agent because another company named something, a product very similar, but their product is nothing like this product. And this product is dangerous to airbrush with and drink or breathe. And theirs isn't. So it created a, a bunch of health risks. So this company literally relabeled, even though it was the other company is out of line, to keep you guys safe. And that helps. Yeah. Just something you might not know actually happened out there. I'm, is it terrible? I'm about to ask her for fresh water. <laughs> that's all right. She said she wanted to help. Well, no, that's, that's, that's what we needed is, is that, you know. <laughs> she said you wanted to help. We're, mm. That's okay. Angst I'm just putting chin. this out here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and hit this with another little kind of similar spot of the green and brown together. I'm just layering this up. Because the modern colors tend to be a little bit transparent. A little strong aspect of burnt there, but I don't really mind. And actually looking at this, I think I'm going to lower the hill. Now that I'm looking, now that I'm looking, I'm going to lower this hill. All right. So well, I'm going to take my uh, yellow ochre and my dox purple. I'm going to mix them together again. And a little titanium white. And I'm going to take this hill down to about here. Oh, yeah. That'll help. See how we're doing? Yeah, I see it. Lower the hill a little bit. I'm going to just make sure I keep my highlights going and then I make this hill feel like it would be doing this. Okay, I'm pulling this in. How's that look? Yep, there we go. Lowered the hill. <laughs> People are like, ah! Sometimes just you lower the hill, guys. It's just, just moving to the hill. You, just, you do what you do. Sometimes you have to put out all new paint because your paint got all sticky and gummy. It's under an air conditioning vent happen but i need these deep values to do the next part so nothing to do but put it in now here i'm going to change things up a little bit i'm going to get into my indian yellow and i'm going to mix this in here with my um bird sienna and my phthalo green you see this here this is not soap this is what's in the paint interesting And I've done tests on this because so many um, teachers over the years have recommended that to me. And I keep thinking maybe I'm just missing something. I don't know why I'm whispering. You can hear me mm. if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> but over the years, right? And then you see online and stuff like that, they'll be like glycerin, they'll be like soap, they'll be all these different things. And so then you start to question yourself as an artist and you go back and you read the artist handbook and you... And you read all your paint stuff, and you read the acrylic Bible, and you read all this stuff. And then you're like, but I feel like it's probably going to cause trouble. Let's see how I just mix this in. But now I've painted so long that I have come to a place where I'm pretty willing to tell an artist right to their face, I don't think it's a good idea and why. Mm. Well, my painting's gotten dark. It's like the sunset on the car. It did. It got... Well, I was going to say, everyone was saying, you're looking pretty, 
pretty good out there. They were wondering, are, someone said, are you on keto? And I was like, what is keto? What is keto? And they were like, you know, like keto is this diet. I was like, oh, no. We I am apple. trying to make healthier life choices. Uh, I got this, not wearing it right now. We got these little watches and the watch says, stop freaking out. And take a walk. Breathe deep. Take I, a walk. Do some sit That's just exactly what I said in Jed. I was like, well, we just got these Apple Watches, so we try to take walks more. I am trying to take walks more. I am trying to be more connected to what I'm doing in my body and living in my body. It is an interesting journey to be doing those things. I'm going to put a little burnt umber out there. I don't know when I'm going to need it again, but if I have it, then it's there. It's It's nice having a little friendly companion that says, you know, you should... You should maybe go, you know, breathe or walk or something, right? You know, that's not <laughs> someone else saying, hey, you should breathe or take a walk when you're all like, dude. I'm going to get know. a little of my burnt sienna and my green again and then into my Indian yellow. I don't want it to be just thalo. I want it to have more natural. I could also have gotten into my ultramarine. And I'm going to grab some of my zinkles. My zinc. Again, if you look at that paint color thing, there's zinc white that's like $4. So don't be like, you know, oh, it's only in like certain paints. A lot of paint lines carry it. And I have that helpful list there, which is going to be a blog at some point, I imagine. All right. So here I am pulling this out. And I'm going to come right here and I'm going to just start touching this down. See how we're done? Touch it down. Touch it. Have some fun. We're looking for little areas of light. We'll let the dark green peer through. See how we're going? Let's paint our hill. This is far away. So things are fuzzy. They're light. There is deep value. You may have noticed that the um, the hill itself, right, has this sort of like strip that comes in here that's got green, but then there's a darker shadow, isn't there? You don't take away that shadow. It got some skin on there, so I just took it off. Just leave it in too. It'll eventually just mold into everything. I'm gonna load, 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 load. Coming forward here. So there's this nice little value of of plants these incredible lupines and like sunflower daisies aren't they i think the number one thing i've been getting like people pinging me for is like sunflowers so there's a bunch of them in future lessons <laughs> so many hope you didn't like them i'm sorry <laughs> you'll be seeing them for a while isn't that nice how that that hill starts to happen can you guys see the hill start to happen i do and you well i know you do but you're here in the you're like on the up close camera. I see what they see. If I'm seeing it, they're seeing it. Okay, I'm gonna put a little plant here. I think I see a little plant that, and I had liked that little, like little pop of plant that was right here. Things were a little bit darker there, but there's this pop of plant. So I'm gonna talk about that. And then there's this crazy cool little run of plants coming up here. So let's get into those guys, right? Yeah. So this was off, this just started kind of like at the back of the car. No point in painting stuff. I know I got to paint away. And this, this sort of came back as a, as a layer thing. And I'm changing the brushstroke because some of these uh, bushes are more structured and some of them are fuzzy. And this one is close enough where I might see some of its structure. And then it's back to the kind of structure of the daisy plants, right? And let's put a little of this green here, but not everywhere. Now, we're going to definitely make sure there's a bit of this behind the car. And coming around the car. Oh, that's so nice. I'm enjoying this. I hope you guys are too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is really cool. Come along and 
come along and paint a painting on a Sunday afternoon. Just patching the overall shapes and placement of some of this. This, we're going to be really varying some greens here, too. We're going to be playing greens on greens on greens. An end of summer green, if that makes sense, too. Yeah. Which I think sometimes is a little bit more challenging to do. I'm wiggling this little row in here. I think it's going to be one of my favorite paintings I've done on the channel, just personally. I'm not claiming most successful painting I've ever had for views, but I think just personally satisfying wise, this is going to be one I really like. So now I'm going to take some ultramarine and I'm going to mix it into my phthalo blue. I mean my phthalo green. The ultramarine. You guys have seen me do the phthalo blue, but we're going to be doing this. And I'm going to get a little of my, I think maybe my ochre. It's going to start giving me the sage green. You guys see the sage green here? I want it even more sage. Let's go really into the yellow ochre. Grab a little, oh, there we go. Grab a little titanium. Sage green. <laughs> Sagey. So some of the greens that are here, and I'm just touching my brush to imply like, the texture or shape or thought of a plant. Ah, uh, little plants. I like those. Do you like you a little plant? Mm-hmm. Very soft. Very soft little line of thought and what could be happening or finding out. Maybe one grew up and everything here is just a little bit more saged out. Is this part sagey? <laughs> that sagey. Needs to, that needs to be on a shirt. Get your sagey going. Bro, you gotta figure it. out how to be able to make bright greens, warm greens, cool greens, sage greens. I can always tell when somebody doesn't uh, paint landscapes because they'll be like, ultramarine is a terrible color. And I'm like, oh, you don't do landscapes. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I would say... Because you've got to do... Your ultramarine is your landscapey friend. When you get your ultramarine out, you're trying to make muted greens. Look at how, how muted that is. And if all you've got is phthalo, you're never, ever going to get to this incredible dry grass color. I just have to wonder, what do they do when they need this weird little dry color? Look at this weird little dry color. But it is like a dry area, isn't it? All right. I find diox to be the most polluting of colors. It is It is a very polluting color. Almost more than black. It's like it persists in everything. And a little, little bit of purple just pops up and says, hello. Now I'm working this through my brush because I don't want pops of pure ultramarine. I want my, I want my, I want that sort of aged green. Oh, I love that one right there. That's so perfect. So we've got bright sage greens, soft sage greens. Look at this little spot right there. How spotty is that? Let's look back. Oh, sorry. Got a little excited. I realize that. I understand what happened there. But I mean, such a this is such a different, more saturated space than over here. And you have to think about how am I going to get to that, you know? How am I going to get that space just worked out? Mary says that your sage green is a wise choice. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, um, oh, <laughs> Mary. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my burnt umber into this mixture that I've got and maybe even a little black, but I've still got the green in it because there's this little spot here I've got to darken that I can see. And there's a little spot here I'm darkening. And I may even go darker. I'm going. Yeah. I'm going to darken that up a bit. I don't want to lose my dark values because I am working some other light values. Get some phthalo blue into that. 
Ooh, that's nice. See, I, what I know is how close. Oh, look at that! Not, it's like a shadow, but it's not just black. These flowers, I can't wait. They're we're so close now. Yeah. When we start putting the flowers in, once we get the basic shrubberies in, once the knights of Ni have done their work, we get our basic shrubberies in. The knights of Ni. <laughs> Sorry to everybody in Britain, just in general, <laughs> for my terrible Monty Python impression. <laughs> Not even for using a British accent, because I know that's already bad enough, but for just being so bad at Monty Python <laughs> that I might possibly have my right to visit Britain revoked. Well. It was bad, I understand it. But I, I can't help it. The Knights of Me well, will be yeah, with me the... forever. I'm just sort of trying to create a soft space of these soft, thought-out little shadows that are here. That hue over there. Don't be worried about that hue over there. I'm going to go and definitely talk about some. Go, oh, here we go. I'm going to sip my, my coffee and contemplate right. my life choices. How contemplate away. Reflect upon the cosmic mirror, Sherpa. How is it over there? Coffee good? I'm going to ask Honey to do her least favorite thing. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll double that up. Here, you can put mine in there too, kiddo. I'm under an air conditioning vent, darling. That's beautiful what you're working on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is a bummer. I'll move that. It's okay. Put the deflector shields up. So I'm getting pretty happy with this little hill, and I'm pretty happy with just the basic shape of the car. And I like those sage greens, and I like that first lay-in. We've got some nice shadows that I'm working here, and I've got some nice build. This will go in really quick because it's just really, honestly, a few pops of highlights of just this really fun color. And then these thoughtful leaves. This here is really about the Indian yellow in the grass. And then we put in these yummy, 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 yummy flowers, like we should. And then the car goes in, and then we have really probably surprised either ourselves or a loved one in our life that we're doing this for. Because there's probably somebody in your life who's like, why don't you paint a car? I like cars. Why don't you paint a fisherman? I like fishermen. Why don't you paint a world wrestling? <laughs> and then you'll be like, because there's no lesson. Sherpa didn't do a lesson yet. Tell YouTube that I need to paint world wrestling. Yes. More wrestling. Hacksaw Jim Don't Douglas. ask me. I'm not doing it. That'd be good. Come on. I gotta leave something for the other YouTubers. I'm gonna leave them wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> what about? But I mean, like the Hulk, Hulk Hogan. I'm gonna. You know what? Roddy, Roddy I paint a lot of stuff. I'm gonna leave something for somebody else to shine on. And, and and you know what? I realize I'm like the Borg out here. I paint everything, and then with the watercolor. So hey, hey YouTube, Undertaker. I give you wrestling. Oh man. So. <laughs> You're you're blowing my A's, funny. man. I'm blowing your man, man. I'm going to get a little bit of my burnt sienna over to this mix and really hit this heavily into the Indian yellow. Grab my zinc. And I'm going to start just talking about some of these. Although they agree, you could probably do the best wrestling pick. Yeah paintings of anyone I, I, I could <laughs> you're so right it seems like you know because you know because then you could mix in a little bit of you know some some of the other wrestling from around the world we guess maybe some roman greco wrestlers thrown in there maybe some of the you know the mexican wrestlers in there we could get like some some different cultural that'd be you know and then we could mash it all up i'm um, see i'm going crazy sherpa here <laughs> You let you you. You know who you asked for that? Go ask Josiah Brooks. That's Macho who asked man, for that. Go ask Josiah Brooks for some wrestling. Say the Sherpa said she won't do it, Andre but Josiah can. <laughs> You're going to be sitting there in Australia, going, "What did I do to her? I was so nice to her at ClamorCon. Why would she do that to me?" I'm just putting in these this little lighter area of the grass. There's sort of a dark base coming through here, and I've got to kind of get that pushed in. 
I'm getting a little bit deeper here and let's make sure that there's texture in this shadow and that's a darker color I just mixed. I added some deeper green and brown into it because I want the texture through here. I don't want to lose my texture. I'll, I'll run this wonderful little texture everywhere. I've got like a deep shadow. Let's get our burnt sienna. We can even get our ultramarine into this mix. Oh, it's just vicious. Vicious, look at us go. We are deeply committed. Just mixing these. We don't want to just apply that there's a shadow here without any little grass texture in it to back that up, right? You know, and then you can come and really get this worked in where it grays out quite a lot. And then you get a little bit of this white and really show off that gray. Mary appreciates that you've drawn the line at pro wrestling. Are, she's, do you? She's, she's like, <laughs> it's got to have one, guys. She's like, I can totally do the Xena and the Wonder Woman. I'm down, but I mean, you know. Pro wrestling is just, but, but, I, I'm going to leave it to Josiah. He's you know, very into you're figure. Just and right over to him. He just he's did just a like, Bob Ross painting, right? He can paint, right? Someone go tell him to do it. He's going to be like, why do I have to do the wrestling? So you don't. What did just... I do? I'm so nice. I'm the nicest man. I have this beautiful baby, this sweet wife, and I live in Australia and cause nobody any trouble. And now you're like, you got to do wrestling? We got to, it's because we got to pick a fight internationally with somebody. And Josiah, you're it. Yeah, he wouldn't be the one I pick with. By the time you guys he's... hear about it, it's going to be on to Franco. He's a fit dude. <laughs> I bet you he can, like, you know, move some pens, like, yeah. draw pretty fast. Yeah, he is pretty, he's pretty skilled. He's probably got some stamina. Stand at that like drawing board all day. Yeah, he does. He's got some skill. Actually, I'm putting you in hands of somebody I think can actually handle it. Sometimes I don't recommend people because I'm like, well, I mean, I don't want to like make it seem like I'm calling them out and they can't. Like, if he decided to take that challenge, like he could full on handle wrestling. Yeah, I, I don't want to call somebody out who's like, what did I do to you? I'm just an innocent bystander. Yeah, no, he could totally do it. He's like talented. We met him actually, so you know we're. We have met and hung out in person and shared, you know, like... Minutes. Yes. Of our lives. Minutes. Minutes of our lives over meals where we have discussed philosophical, artistic things such that we feel comfortably, mildly heckling each other from YouTube afar. Yeah. I could be totally wrong, though. I could be like, he could be sitting there stewing, and yeah. then I like, I have, a, you know, you can have it. You can have somebody be super mad at you, and you don't even know. That is always an outer body experience. Like when somebody's like super ticked at you and you don't know. And you're like, I'm so sorry. If I didn't know I would have fixed it. And that's if they totally let you fix it too. Like you're lucky enough for them to be the kind of person that like, like will we'll take like, hey, I think we had a misunderstanding as an answer. Because sometimes I, people will just won't believe you. But he's pretty chill. I, I don't think I, that's Yeah, case. he's very chill. I had a friend <laughs> have a misunderstanding. <laughs> And her, the person who had the misunderstanding with her was not chill. So, so what are you? Not chill, but Josiah is super chill. We're so like. I'm just like adding little highlights on my dry grass. I'm just trying to make sure that I have these little patches of, of, of this sort of summary nonsense that's like this. We're so disclaimery and like we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings that we spend more time saying we're sorry. We don't mean to heckle you, but we're heckling you. Then we teach the painting. Now on to the painting. So I've got this little light value of this sort of off-white sage you saw me mixing, and I'm just putting this in here. I'm like, I'm also like thinking about like design and stuff like that. Like, where do I want to have like a balance of things, you know, the shape of things? And then sometimes I deviate from the reference. <laughs> That's me. All right, but I am loving that. I'm also having just a great deal of fun. So you guys have to bear with me because I'm just having a great time. So I'm going to load back up in my Indian yellow, which is like the jam. My jammy jam. Go ahead and get a little yellow. bit of my ultramarine blue into that to do the weird green. And it is a weird green, but it's so interesting. When you get zinc into it, and you're like, oh, okay, I get it. And I'm just using this brush to just sort of give myself this scratchy value. See, I'm getting scratchy values. And you can always come through what's interesting because there's a lot of these like little red bits here. I could just scratch you value in some red. This is what we're doing. So I'll work it through here. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Scratchy value. 
because this grass is dry and it's short and it's got a lot going on and I have some heavy flowers here and this center resting space for my eye is critical so I got to spend a minute with it or the whole painting will fall down. It'll fall down, man. It came over, man. Came over. Why is it? No, we don't need to do that. Came over. Nuke it. It's the only way to be sure. <laughs> and I'm coming along here just giving myself a little bit of this yummy little yellow that I like. But see, this is keeping this resting space. I have these bright lights and I have to build this up. I'm building it up. <sighs> what? It's no, fine. No. Fine. It's just a uh, little paint. That's how they'll know it's the original. <sighs> See how we're just we're weaving, weaving grass. Is everybody weaving their grass? I think so. For goodness sakes, weave your grass. Enjoy your brush and weave your grass. Now I'm gonna let this have a bit of a rest for a second, for a second. Because I have to come here and make some more like leafy leaves. I'm going to come into these two lovely, lovely bits. And I'm going to start making this little strange little stroke. This is a brighter green, right? So we're really seeing it. Maybe there's just a little bit right here. For the most part, this is what we've got. And I may come in, get a little of my ultramarine in there, because I gotta sage it out, don't I? Be like, I don't know, you're the teacher. <laughs> That's why I showed up to this video. I'm gonna leave 75 comments about it over seven videos. <laughs> have nothing to do with where I was mad. All right, so I'm just adding this little sage right here. I'm just tapping this in. Tap, 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 tap. Load, 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 load. I like this load, 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 load. When I'm loading like this, I'm preventing it from being, I'm thoroughly mixing. There we go. Just getting a little thought of this. I'm going to get even a little more and maybe some of the yellow in here. And say that right here, maybe there's just a highlight right there. And I feel like I'm seeing another one right here. Just coming back. And so now we've hit some of the highlights that are going to be in those wonderful flower bushes. And without rinsing my brush, I'm going to get right into the yellow ochre and I'm going to just work everything through. There I'm doing. Yeah. Just doing the dry grass. Be sure to leave shadows in the dry grass. This is honestly, for me, like, there's the challenge, right? That deep value in the patches in the dry grass. It's keeping those going so that we get nice light. Like, I'm going to get a little more of my white into this. It's a nice bit of light right here I don't want to lose. Now, can you go into... When you're doing your next patch of grass, yeah. um, break that down a little bit more because Neil was saying uh, she's having trouble struggling with grass there. She's having trouble str struggling with the grass? Yeah. The grass is being like uncooperative? First yeah. of all, tell your canvas none of that nonsense. Today is painting day. No. Um, so what's happening with my grass? If you look at your reference, Sit for a minute and notice how some of these are going this way. There's breaks. There's weird little off directions. There's sort of an overall headed. Remember Chet from Weird Science? Sort of like Chet's head here. Yeah. But there's also these weird little bits of things that are having a moment. That was Bill Paxton, the same actor who did the it's Game Over Man. That's right. Bill Paxton is in my life a lot. But not, not like romantically. I'm not claiming that. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Like well, on TV. 
I, I so when I'm doing the grass, like when I'm working, I will try to work some maybe that's going like, yeah, I'm wiggling my brush and it's going to come this way, but I might take some this way and I let that brush be rough and crazy. Look how I let that brush be rough, rough and crazy. What? Nothing. Just, what? It's, it's got Chet's hair. Chet's hair. It does. It has a little bit of Chet's hair. And I'm working it out. Uh, it's one of my favorite I want to catch this bit of Chet's hair. That's all I'm saying. And I want it to be kind of dry and, and light. And it's not quite there yet. And I'm just trying to take it to that space. I feel like we've got some green in there. So I've rinsed out. And I'm going to get a little bit of my burnt sienna and my burnt umber together. Mixed through thoroughly, as you can see I'm doing. And I'm going to get a little of my yellow ochre. Mix through, as you can see, I'm thoroughly doing. And I'm going to come through and also hit this as well through here. Oh. I'm going to come and try to leave like a dark value area if I can. I'm stroking up and I'm following patches. I am not exactly married to the reference, but I wouldn't want to try to think about this too much without it, if that makes sense. The reference is going to help me find my way through what I'm doing. I just went back and got another little fresh brush. And by using the brush this way, it's leaving a lot of the ground underneath exposed to so I haven't lost the green values that I'm trying to catch. And what I'm thinking I'm going to have to do is come back through and put my shadows in here. Are you guys still with me? Okay. A lot of us are still with you. Not all of you, just some of you. Over 400 of us. All right, over 400 of you. Let's keep drying out our summer grass. <laughs> Cinnamon doesn't get to see the chat, and that's partially because oh, it's smart. She likes to read the chat. I just stop. I just stop working, and I read the chat. She's a very she's a very social, chatty person. I am. I'm a so very social, to, chatty person. She likes to engage. So I'm going to take a little of my burnt uh, umber and a little of my uh, ultramarine. I'm going to mix these in together, and I'm going to. Make sure that I've got a little bit of a shadow happening here. I feel like I don't want to lose. I like one coming back here, maybe. And then this, this little fellow right here has got kind of a shadow coming off of him. That. Let's, let's cast one right here. Are you getting some shadows in that ground? All right. Okay, good. Oh, I was like, where is he going? Now I see. Okay, let's get back into our flowers. Let's let this rest for a minute, and then we'll pop a few pot, patches of highlights. Let's get back into our flowers. So my flowers, I'm going to do my Indian yellow thum, 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 and my phthalo green. Thum, thum, thum. Quite bright. I may knock it back with just a smidge. Of the ultramarine, and I'm going to get my zinc to lighten it. Yeah, I'm just—I love this color, the Indian yellow. It's just my favorite. Just a little bit right there. And come down here and have a little highlight there. Let's put a little highlight. A couple of these leaves have this wonderful little pop of light. I want to show them popping out of the hill. Are they popping yet? I think they're popping. Do they feel poppy? They're popping. They're I poppy. see the pop. Pop those leaves. There we go. Let's just. Talk a little bit about these little distant flowers, and they have little highlights and 
little shadows, right? Yeah. So we got to add that next layer that's happening. I'm just dashing my brush. I'm trying to keep, what I'm looking for is I'm trying to find the spots where there's light. And I'm trying to make sure that I don't let my brain make like patterns where I shouldn't have them. Next to the car, I'm going to bring a bunch of this light. Now I'm going to get more yellow on here, working my Indian yellow right through there. Haven't rinsed my brush, getting a lot more of my zinc. And then I'm going to find little spots here for these little bits of highlight. They don't go everywhere, do they? We're just highlighting some of this. Maybe this little spot will be more highlighted than some of the rest of the hill. Where I'm going to have a whole bunch of my daisies. Now on this one, I'll go ahead and I'm going to work some titanium into this. Get back into this mixture here because I want it to be very opaque. Now, this I'm going to just talk about these little leaves here that are just on this little bush, little friend here. Maybe this painting some, has been a lot of layers. This painting is layers. We're we're painting a truck in a field. It's it's, it's been a three hooter. It's been kind of difficult. Yeah, this is not our easy paint. We have very easy paintings you do with Q-tips. Take 15 minutes. Do that too. Get a really nice tree. Get yourself hooked on acrylic painting before you commit yourself to one of these things. Now, when you add to the fact that it's green, I might be calling this one Shrek. <laughs> you cracked your daughter up. All right, I'm going to load up some idiot yellow here into the brush I've already got going, and I'm going to just make sure that I talk about some of these leaves and their structures a bit. I'm going to come here and I'm going to work this a lot. I don't know why I held that away from me. Why would I even do that? That's really crazy to do. Work it, girl. Work it. I am working. I'm going to rinse out. And I'm going to get a little of my ultramarine and a little of my Indian yellow together. And some of my zinc. Remember, it makes that slightly more sage green, but it's still like very fresh fresh. Oh, it's different, and I'm going to make this little scumbling back and forth kind of motion for this plant right here. Let's see how that's going. I guess yeah. my painting. You're showing the palette. That's awesome. I'm very happy with that. I think I am coming to a space where I'm like feeling like we've got a lot of painting here, don't we? We do. Now let's make a little headway on our car. So I'm going to get my smaller little Cambridge. And I'm going to go ahead and get my black into it. I'm going to make sure that things like my trunk are very dark. No junk in that trunk. No, no. Someone's already come and gotten all the junk. Postman's already been and gone. I'm going to shadow underneath the hood. Back here. Under here. And maybe, you know, we'll shadow right there a little bit. There's going to be a little bit of one here. I'm going to get my brush dipped in water just so the paint's flowing off of it nicely. I'll put that there because that's a nice little line and have one here. One there. 
I'm going to bring this little line around here. Sort of curve it down. There's a neat little point where it meets the fender, so that's sort of fun. Talk about our little... I'll put some flowers back, but right now I'm going to just talk about this old bumper that's falling off. There is this trunk that comes up. It's past a shadow right here that comes across. When I have that in, I'm going to get my burnt umber first. And I'll come here over the bumper maybe a little bit and then up this trunk. See, I'm curving that stroke. Mm -hmm. I curve that stroke. Side edge here. How I handle painting something I don't really feel like is in my wheelhouse and not freak out or just go, oh gosh, it's not perfect, or oh, you know, people are going to judge me, or all that stuff that I know artists go through is that I just sit back and enjoy what is happening. Coming and adding the outline here. Like, I enjoy what it is. I don't worry about what it isn't or, you know, any of my expectations on myself. I just breathe in, breathe out, and enjoy what I am doing and what it is like to paint. You know, I can always come back and add a leaf or two in the interest of layering. And that that's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna get a little of my rust color, my burnt sienna. Let's start some more. Some fresh. Start popping this wonderful car. Probably gonna have to put up a fresh pad. It's been out for a while. The salacious cad. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and get some Indian yellow into it, but I'm just gonna be doing my burnt sienna. Let's uh come up, talk about the trunk a little bit right here. Wiggling back and forth. Right here, put a little highlight of that color. I'm gonna offload on my brush. You can see how I did. I'm gonna pick up what I need. Here, I'm gonna highlight right there. The car. Right here, highlight. There are says a little highlight right here. Just dry brushing and highlighting. Now, I'm going to get a little of the dye off into my, my brush back and forth. And you know I have my yellow on it, so that's going to gray it out. And I'm going to come right here and start to talk about a little shadow that's up front. It maybe comes back a little bit. Now we've got the front kind of in shadow, and we're pulling the back out of everything. Now I've got a sort of burnt sienna and i may grab just a smidge of my uh green into it that was a little too much because i'm just graying it back i don't want it to be quite as bright as it can be i'm going to just maybe want to talk about the top of this piece here because there's an interesting little bend to it i don't want to get too specific because if i do then i'm gonna be in trouble i may grab a little of my yellow ochre and some of my white. And talk about something that went, was right here. That we see kind of peeking out of the trunk. Let me see my, oh, there we go. You know, that grass has really just sort of livened up that. I mean, it's just, I mean, 
when you take a step back, it's amazing how much pop that has. I'm going to just dry brush over the bumper because there's a lot of it that's just going to go away the minute I start hitting my highlights. Now, see if I have any of my CAD left. I do, under the skin. So I'm going to take my burnt umber and my CAD, and I mix them together. It's one of my very favorite power combos. And I'm just trying to make sure that I got a nice little shape. Mixing my cats and my brown. This one right here. We can come right here on the right hand side, pull it forward just a little bit. See, I'm pulling it forward. Yeah. I'm just running this little bit right here. I have to move its shadow and I don't mind. I'm going to scumble right there. Just a little bit of rust coming forward. I'm just go back and forth. All right, where are we at now? So our car is starting to happen. Yeah. I still want my rough brush. I'm not going to be coming back through with my soft brush for a minute. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and I may even put a little of my alizarin crimson in it. Tap this around. Car. There we're doing. So here, I'll take that a little bit forward. Too, oh, that's too far forward. That's too bright for that space. We'll have to come knock that back. I'm going to get more of that alizarin crimson. Now I'm going to get my zinc. I'm going to be finding little highlights. I might be able to take advantage of in this mix. There's definitely one right there. Let's get that one. This is really cool. Is it? Yeah. I'm always, you know, I, I would say it's more like making sure you're happy is probably the most nerve wracking thing about me painting cars. This is really nice. And, and, you know, there's, like I was saying, I think on another one of them, it's not so much getting the car perfect as it is emotionally representing the car yeah. accurately. You know what I mean? And and I by that, it's like Ford guys totally know if you if it's a Ford front end and if it's wrong. Yep. So That's, if, I'd say the hardest part of painting cars is that Ford guys. No, not four well, guys. I'm not picking you know, on Chevy guys. guys, Dodge guys. Yeah, you know. all, all the guys, all the girls, all the people all the, that are car yeah. fans. So I'm coming along with my black, and I'm using my number two ruby satin because this gives me a very sharp edge. And this sharp edge lets me pay attention to a couple of very important lines. A lot of this, not such a big deal, but some of this, super big deal. RoboCam just happened to be at the right angle today for the way that really? you're working. Yeah, because it's just like, it's been great. You've been able to switch back and forth on your arms, and it's not, you've not been at all. I guess RoboCam has good Let position. Get back some in there. I haven't even got my glasses out, which is crazy. I'm going to make sure that we've got that. There we go. I'm going to wipe away that one extra line. See, I'm just trying to sculpt out the stuff I'm very concerned on the car about. 
yeah, I can come back with like a lot of plants and make up for a lot of stuff, but there's a couple elements I really want to get so that the car feels like rust. I'm getting some of my brown. I'm just making sure that my hood's attached to the door jam. I'm going to get some of my Indian yellow and some of my zinc. And I'm going to make sure a little bit of light is popped here in a couple of places. There we go. How are we doing? Let me see. All right, so starting to look like a little old car in a little old field. I may go ahead and get some of my ultramarine. If I have any left, I have a little bit, I can tell. And some of my burnt umber, it's going to make me nice gray. I'll get some of my titanium white. And I'm going to just talk about this just a small amount. Maybe one of these. Maybe one of these. And something right there. Let's get our white into this, but I haven't really wanted to brush out so that that's highlighted. And there we go. That's all I'm going to try to say about this car. Now I get to do my favorite part, which I showed up for the painting for, which is to plant a bunch of flowers. <laughs> Let me coffee up if Honey would be so kind as to re. And I, and I want you to know, she 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 smiled at me even though I asked again. So, I was just over here. <laughs> I was I was. So someone was asking. They were like, "Do you follow Bob Bob Ross?" And I was like, "Well, we love Bob, but I don't know what you mean by follow because last... I'm not currently actively watching Bob. I certainly watched Bob growing up. I respect Bob. I love Bob." Um, we did a video lesson, um, how to paint Bob Ross tutorials using acrylic, and it has a bunch of tips and tricks so you can, if you find a book or you find a lesson you want to do, you can do it. Yeah. And we have an upcoming, I paint, I follow a Bob Ross tutorial in oils using his kits and stuff. He's cool. You guys raised a bunch of money for St. Jude, and that was the reward you guys got. So, yeah, I mean, I would say we're, we're, we're Bob friendly. Yeah, and, absolutely. And honestly, Bob's people have thrown us a couple helping hands a few they've times. Been, they've I mean, been very nice. They've yeah, given us friendly really nice advice, been very, very polite. Anytime we've asked them for anything, they've been very open and friendly. So pretty wonderful. awesome. Really. I mean, I'd say, yeah, very, very friendly. Didn't very I grab friendly. cadmium yellow? Those salacious cads keep running off. They do. I know I have a cad yellow. You have a couple, you know. So I need a cad, cad yellow. Oh, oh, I'll get you one. My daughter is pointing out it's a very long video. You guys think it's a long video? But I mean, that's what it takes to do this kind of a landscape. So it's good to have your objections. I mean, not your objections, your expectations. He's okay. It sounds terrible, but he's okay. Um, any of these? I just need a little cat yellow. All right, let's. Let's paint a landscape. We're going to put out some of our yellows again. We're going to put out a little zinc again. We're pretty good on the greens. We'll come back with a few touch-ups, but we're pretty good on that. See how I'm feeling. You're pondering. Pondering. Get another number four. Cambridge, I've got a few of these out. That one's pretty dirty, so I'll get this one in my clean water. So in the distance, there is uh, there are some little yellow flowers, and but they're a little bit knocked back because they're far away. So I'll take my um, yellow ochre, interestingly enough, and my dock's purple, and maybe even a little cat into this. And this is going to be my distant yellow. And I'm going to just tap about. Here and there, and some of them will go above, and some of them will come below, and I'm just 
trying to breathe and be in process of some little distant yellow something. You guys have little distant yellow somethings? Yeah. Now here, it gets a little bit heavier. It's heavy man, super heavy. So I'm going to come here. This. But they're not quite... There's a wonderful like little patch here of something that's put. And there's little bits of this around. So let's, I'm going to work that through my brush. So loading up. Just tapping the brush where I'm just talking a little bit about flowers. There we go. And then through here, there's a nice little kind of heavy bit of flowers. And we're just thinking about where are the flowers heaviest? Where, where are they at? You know, they're distant. We, we kind of know that they're there, but we're not. I can come through and get a little more macad into this mix, but I'm still working it into the mix, right? And that's like a second value of yellow. And I'm just very loosely going to talk about in this space. Yeah, and then there can be little bits of stuff. Even if we know there's going to be other little bits of stuff. And then we can start to talk about little bits of stuff here. And coming around that bumper, I'm going to kind of put that in. So you see what I mean? Like you can always add flowers. You can always just drop your, your, what, it could be anything here. Whatever it is that you're dropping, you can drop it there. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come get a little bit of my docks purple. And I'll gray this out with my yellow, my yellow ochre. But I'm going to keep it pretty doxy. And you can also come into a couple spots and add these little dark values of like what could be little faces of flowers, right? That are facing you or not facing you. I put those sort of in the centers. I'm just tapping as lightly and gently as I can. Because you want to show that they're there, but you don't want to be too specific except for a few that are up close. So you're trying to talk about the little faces of flowers that are far away. Let's see how that's looking. See how it starts to look like distant little, it's like going to look like up close. You're like, wait, what's happening? But far away, it looks like, oh, that's what's happening. I get it. You can always come back if you feel like you've got too much of a dark face and see, put something back. So you're not trapped. You're just talking about that stuff. And I can come forward with a little bit more yellow. As I'm coming forward, I can keep adding more and more yellow. I'm going to just make these little brushy strokes. They're kind of going forward. There's these interesting little ones that are right here that are sort of like these little, they've been blown. I'll come back with a small detail brush to do their faces. And if you need more green, you just come into your green and your Indian yellow, right? You've made it all day. Make sure you've got the green you need for what we're doing. Don't be, don't be shy. Don't be shy. I love how the little flowers are all coming in. Yeah, they're just going to all come in. You know, a little green back here. Even though it's quite dark in it. So I'm going to rinse out and keep painting little flowers. That's the whole reason why I got into this painting in the first place. <laughs> Probably the whole reason you came in, Sky Flowers. Some element of it. You're like, I'll paint this car because I'm really trying to learn this other thing. You can see I'm just making these little... Little marks. I'm 
of these are just a little more yellow. And you can bring some of this yellow back here, not too much. But you can, this is your bright yellow for the back area. You're popping in here and there, pop in your bright yellow. Just paint a little flower. I'll tell you what. If you've got to do an art show and it's to a new crowd and you want to make sure you've got some sales, <laughs> do some of these. Yeah. Because what will happen is that a couple will be walking by and one member of the couple will be like, I really like to get some art. And the other member of the couple will be like, art stupid. We don't need no art. We're paying bills. And then they'll see like the car and then they'll be like, I need a car. <laughs> like people will be like, they're always like, how are you getting sales? I'm getting no sales because I got three cars, man. That's my, that's, that's my secret. <laughs> I don't consider myself a car painter. <laughs> so it's when I first started saying on the show, people that knew me, they're like, what are you talking about? You always have like a car, right? Like mm -hmm. at a show, I have two or three. I'm not saying they're great. I'm not Billy the artist. I'm just saying that I know if I paint the field of flowers with an old ru rusty car or say a VW bug with some camping stuff, uh -huh. The VW bug lover loves it, and the flower lover loves it. That's at least a sale. Cover the cost of my booth. <laughs> gotta be maniacal. <laughs> gotta cover my booth. I gotta cover the cost of my booth, dude. And that's what I call those paintings. It's to cover the cost of my booth paintings. So I'm just coming along here. Just painting these little... I love this sort of little scratchy bits of the shape of them. And that, it's fun to be in this brush... You know, trying to talk about these little flowers and and then know that you are you have this sort of a going. Go go go. Go 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 go. Just keep bringing all these little flowers. A lot. <laughs> settle down, settle down. No, I I love this. I like being here and looking for little spots that are begging for a little touch of yellow. Rinse that out. Now you can indulge a little of the quinacridone if you put it out, or alizarin. Either one will work, right? into your yellow you want it still to be quite yellow but it's like warmed up by the color and then if you take your zinc where are you on it oh there you are this is going to be quite bright you can then create some of these popped highlights on the flowers there you go you ready wish me luck I'm just finding a little, I need to work through the brush a little more. There we go. So what I'm doing here is I'm just catching some of these, these beautiful little blooms with the highlight. Warmed it up. Right, we had the, the purple graying some of them out. So when I come with these brighter, warmer colors, look at how they pop. It's like light hit them, isn't it? Yeah. And this is why painting um, landscapes is relaxing right here at this moment. are your little flowers i love it yeah yeah it really is turning out nice we're back to having a bunch of one hoots next week so you know enjoy these little moments where we take a minute and we examine our painting process a little bit right 
here at the car, I'm going to just pop a little of this yellow. See that? Yeah. Not. <gasps> it's just so nice, isn't it? It's so wonderful. Now I'm going to get a little teeny tiny brush, guys. A teeny tiny brush? Teeny tiny little brush. You could use my dotting tool. And I'm going to get a little of my Doc's purple. Twin. A little of my burnt sienna. places I just want to show a little bit of the inside of a little yellow flower right oh. those are great just a little bit they were asking am I mesmerized I was like yeah for sure <laughs> yeah, there's no yellows over here I'm like gosh I hope there's no yellows on the other side because if there is I full on forgot them. So now we have these nice little front faces, right? You can always sort of balance them out with just a little burnt sienna to give them a little values. But we do want to show that some of them have the dark spots. Back into our little brush, super thoroughly, viciously washed out. Viciously washed. Viciously. I don't know what a vicious wash is. You're like, I don't know what's vicious, but okay. Could be vicious. Could be vicious. Now, I'm going to probably take a little of my Doc's purple, and I think I'll do my phthalo blue because that's still out on the canvas. And I'm going to mix these together and a bit of my zinc. And I'm going to paint some distant little stock flowers. Making these long sort of a little more zinc. Tap in a few bits of blue, maybe where it could be in the distance. Now that's so saturated that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little of my yellow ochre. And I'm going to mix it into this to knock it back. I'm not trying to make green. I'm trying to take this purple and make it not so vibrant so that I can pop a vibrant, there we go, color against it, especially in the distance. These guys are in the dark, so it's okay. They don't have to have that much color going, but. You do need to have some of that showing there because we're playing with these little loop lines, right? Yeah. That are everywhere. Little stock. There we go. And by doing the dark loop lines first, then when you come back and you pop their color, They'll really go. There you go. There's a little run of them. See the little run of them come through here? Yeah. And a little, another little run of them is going to come right here. Look at them go. Oh, they just went everywhere. You know how they are. They'll just grow and grow and grow. Blue pines here and there. Now I'm also going to come over here. We've got some other loop lines, but we're going to get a little brighter because that's kind of closer to us. So I'm going to rinse out with my dirty water. I'm going to take my dots over here and I'm going to get a little of my quinacridone into it like you do. Get a little of my zinc. You can get some of your blue into that. Loosely mixed, guys. Just touch it. You 
very light. See how it just barely touches any part of the... Yeah, we're just barely, barely. Yeah. Barely, barely. Oops, come on, but it's okay. It's not going to hurt us. This wonderful color. Just that play of contrast. Look at that play of contrast. It's so awesome. It really is. And the muted purples into the, you know, when you get the zinc in there, and then you've got the muted purples. If I get way too much, I'm going to do some come back. Let's see. Push it back. I don't freak out. I don't throw the painting out. I just, oh, that's just too vibrant. Let's relax a little bit. Let's chill a little bit. Find our space a little bit. Look at this wonderful space of purple around this car. Might get a little of the blue, which is going to be psycho stand out. I love this. Be playful. You can be better than nature. This is really amazing. Oh, isn't it? Just think about it. Just barely touch the canvas. Just think about, oh, how you feel about the flower. Like, what is the color play like? What are the structures like? How are they loosely related to it? Oh, that's so sweet. Okay. Last little bit of play, and then I think we can give it a signature. Now we've got this mix right here which is, you know, our Quinn, and a little of our Dioc, a little of our Zinx. You can always grab some of your Thalo. We're just making these loose mixes. You should make some stock, right? Yeah. As they would be, like they, they curve up. We really have them here, so... You can really just play with it all through here. You even have some right here. Start shading a little stock. They do. Shade them up. Painting is different than photography. Yes, it absolutely is. Even when you see somebody doing realism, they're doing more than realism, so you know, look at more than their deaf use of value and change to create the illusion of real realism and start looking at the wonderful artistic decisions that they're making in their paintings to convey a particular story. So I'm more zinc and more of this brighter color that I've got. I'm gonna just touch a little sunlight on the front of these. Are they popping? You know, you can always get a little more white out there and pop them some. Pop those little things. Get them to pop. More zinc. And then we're going to sign it. Yeah? Yep. Thinking? Yep. It's pretty good. Yeah. No, I'm very happy with it. It's just a nice little landscape. We're just painting today. Paint your nice little landscape. How are your little flowers looking? I see. think they look great. Okay. No, no. Let's go in. Just making sure that the values are good. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, that was great. 
I know, I'm so bossy. And then no, no, like, I just... You're no. so bossy of your husband. I'm like, well... No, not at all. I'm just, you're not bossy I'm not trying to be. I'm just trying to... You just listen. Okay. Oh, excuse me, yawning. Coordinating is the most thing. We've been in here two... This is like two hours and 20 minutes. This it's is long for us. It's not long for what the yeah. lesson is, but it's long for us. But I think that it's giving you guys oh, an my. idea this of how... So so good everybody has just been so impressed at the skies the contrast the way that the, this little truck has just or little car has just popped right up yeah you know again well, i consider my <laughs> jam but people should know that just because i say something's not my jam don't mean i can't do it <laughs> <laughs> everyone's giving me a hard time next time you say so what do you think i'm gonna have to go meh it's all right he does that already, guys. Don't wor don't worry. He like puts me in my place all the time. He's like, eh, I don't know. Did you get me more contrast? It was so so. Very dark painting. Rope. So I just have that little bit there. Oh, it's so cool. And I'm really happy with that. So I feel like I've captured that sense of the day that I wanted. It's really nice. And I'm gonna give it a signature. Yeah. I'm feeling cheeky, and I feel like I can. Um, I want white. I'm gonna put up my fluid white. Oh, is that okay? You okay? I'm I think good. I hit the. I hit the. I don't know what you hit. It's all good. It isn't. Well, I want this in here, but I don't want it so like vibrant that it takes over the whole painting. But you need to be able to see it. So sometimes mm -hmm. I knock my signature back a little bit so I don't. Take out my whole painting and try and see. All right. That's pretty cool. Mm. That is pretty cool. I really like that. Hopefully, something in here resonated with you or locked, unlocked something on your artist journey for you. Hopefully, you saw potential in yourself to be able to do things. Look, I'm not comfortable in the space when I do cars, but I do them because what I do is I just take myself out of that mindset and just enjoy painting what's in front of me and not worry about what I feel like is my best skill or my worst skill or any of that. I just I just float along and have fun. And I hope that I hope and wish that for you as well. I really want to thank John because this was a long run and I want to thank my daughter, honey, because this was a long run. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you. At the easel really soon. Bye-bye.